So previously we covered importing. We also then revisited importing, checking out some advanced ways to rename and change our imports and make them easier to work with. But what happens when you're trying to import something that you don't have, something that's not a built-in package? Well, you can download it and place it in the folder with your source file or integrate it into your project or include it from your install slash home directory. There's a bunch of different places that you can pull these from, but there's also package managers. Most languages will have some kind of package manager like Ruby gems for Ruby. Um, and for Python, we have pip. Now pip is kind of in an interesting beast, um, but it's really easy to use. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to switch over here to a command line and this works the same in terminal as well if you're using osx or linux uh, what we can do is we can type in pip uh, this will make sure that it's installed uh, and it will show the uh, help options for pip uh, pip has a couple commands common ones will be list um, but what we're going to do is we're going to install something so what we're going to do is we're going to use pip to install colorama and it's installed, that's all we need to do. Uh, what pip does is it goes through and finds packages that have been submitted by uh, the open source community or whatnot, and you can simply use pip to install them with single lines. Now we can access Colorama. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, from Colorama, import everything. Uh, because I'm using uh, Windows uh, PC right now, what will happen is it won't function until I use the init command. Uh, this does nothing on other platforms, um, but it works for cross-platform support. So you'll want to have this even if you're not working on a Windows machine so that it does function properly. Um, what we can do here is let's go ahead and just print uh, hello. All right, so we can, we can see that our code is working here. But what Colorama allows us to do is to colorize the text output on our uh, console prints. Uh, in this case, it works cross-platform. So it works with all like Linux, Windows, Mac, the usual. Um, but let's go ahead and show some of its power here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say four dot red plus this should be red. So let's go ahead and run it. As you can see, it prints out red, no problems. Let's go ahead and remove this init and show you that uh, while it still shows red, uh, it's, a little, it's a little different. So we'll wanna make sure that our init is called so that it's properly exited and entered uh, in the way that all systems can read. But let's go ahead and look into this a little more. We've got back dot yellow um, this is background coloring let's go ahead and run that now we got an issue here now what is the issue here well what I did was once again we have to be very specific with how we're calling these the issue here is calling the specific colors has to be done in uh, all caps because that's the actual um, accessor that we use. Um, so doing yellow with the lowercase or whatever will not function. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, you'll see that the color is still red. Um, that's because uh, what's happening is it sets the color, but it doesn't ever stop or automatically reset. Um, there is some options that you can do that you can play around with with this, but you can also use reset all. And you can say normal text. Let's go ahead and run that. As you can see, it's normal. So in order to explain how this is output, let's go ahead and take a look here at manually placing in some color data. Let's run that. As you can see, I rendered the, the direct, you know, colorizing string. The main benefit of the Colorama is it adds that multi-platform support. So I can use this, and instead of having to format it for each platform dependent on a bunch of stuff, it'll automatically do that for me. And the other benefit is that 
you have the uh, kind of these quick and easy things to remember, background, foreground, style, etc. And this is just the example of one of many. There is an, a near limitless number of packages that you can access, not only on Python, but on all languages. So look around for a package manager, whether it's iOS development with CocoaPods, whether it's pip on Python or Ruby gems on Ruby, there's plenty of ways for you to access uh, these packages without having to go find the source, download the source code, build or compile it in some cases, or import it into your projects or things like that. You can, you can in a lot of these cases, just kind of quickly build these out. Uh, so I hope you learned something. Um, we'll be using this later, so stick around to see how we use that.